Mr. Valadeo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank my colleague, Mr. Garcia, for bringing this uh, amendment up. Um, as another California resident, and I know California has come up a lot today, and I apologize to my colleagues for that. But uh, high speed rail has been an interesting project. I've not been a fan of it from the very beginning. But it is actually being built as we speak in my district. Um, I get to drive by the mounds of dirt that they've put up over the last few years uh, and wonder if they'll ever actually finish this project. The frustrating part with this project is, is when it started out at $33 billion when it was originally st uh, put on a, uh, a ballot for election, it was $10 billion uh, from each private, federal, and state. Now we're up over $100 billion. The project was originally over 800 miles. Now I think we're somewhere around two to 300 miles. And they keep lowering the amount of miles because they can't seem to keep the, co keep the cost under $100 billion. Um, Obviously, it's a government program. We know government programs always get out of control. But the biggest problem with this one is the way they've been treating our locals. We've had some severe fights with them over the way they've treated some of our cities, our communities, our counties, uh, and even some camps that we had. We had a farm labor camp in Wasco that they decided to, to have them evacuate and shut down. They've left that facility now. It's going to be a cost of that little city, that little community, about $10 million. $10 million is not something the city of Wasco can afford. Um, but now they're left on the hook for this project because High Speed Rail decided they wanted uh, that community evacuated and emptied out. And it's now become a center for crime, uh, a center for, for folks that, uh, that actually take vehicles or equipment that they steal, a place for gangbangers to go do drugs or, or continue their illegal activities. And it's just become a big problem for those local business owners and those local homeowners in that area. And then you've got the way they treated the uh, the farmers themselves going right through their property. Uh, originally, the project was supposed to go on an existing corridor, uh, either 99, 5 uh, rail that's there, Burlington Northern or Union Pacific, but they chose their own path. And so they just cut right down the middle of people's properties and cities, and it hasn't worked out like they thought. And so there has to be a serious conversation on this. I'm thrilled that Garcia brought this up. I think it's a good amendment. I think we should support it. And if not, at least have the conversation about making sure we hold them accountable with the dollars that they do have because we have a lot of very good product projects around the country that probably deserve this money more than high-speed rail does. So I appreciate the time and I yield back. Ms. Torres. 